This here is Le'uli Nishmat Sabi Mori, uh, in memory of my grandfather, Mayor Ben Chaim Yaakov, my father's father, my Zeta Meyer Engels, his yurt site is coming up on the sixth day of Kislev uh, right now. Uh, so um, have it in mind a little bit uh, as we begin the shir. Today's topic is a bracha of thanksgiving, the Inyan Birkat Shechianu. As is the case with many halachic topics, it's not a shir, it's a series. It's a series masquerading as a shear. So we can't possibly parse all of the practical uh, elements of this vast topic. Uh, obviously, there are some practical elements that we need to drill down to in order to have some uh, marching orders. Halacha means to walk and to go in a certain direction. So just by way of introduction, and again, with the opening caveat, that I'm not treating the entire topic of Birchat Shechianu, because as we'll see shortly, there are various permutations of same, various times in which it is recited in life, and uh, they are differentiated. And sometimes, as we'll see soon, there's a great uh, subjective factor that uh, is also at play. So first things first, the world of brachot itself is a vast one. We have uh, general categories of uh, brachot. Uh, we have birchot hananin, which are brachot that we recite before we enjoy something in the world. We have birchot hariya. <clears throat> excuse me, when we see something, there's a birchot hashevach. We have uh, brachot, which are related to birchot ha-mitzvah, that are connected to uh, uh, mitzvot that we're going to perform. And of course, we also have birchot hoda'a, blessings of thanksgiving. Of all the categories I mentioned, the two categories of shevach and hoda'a, praise and thanksgiving, may have a little more overlap than the other categories, as we'll see shortly, although the truth is there is overlap between all of them, certain uh, situations. From the Torah's perspective, the only bracha that's mentioned explicitly in the Torah is Birkat Amazon, no other bracha appears in the Torah as a commandment that falls upon every individual as a result of or in anticipation of a particular experience. Um, there is, of course, the bracha Birkat Kohanim, uh, and that is a mitzvah specifically for Kohanim, which is, of course, also Min HaTorah. It is not to say there aren't other recitations and things that we say uh, in uh, the Torah. Uh, think of uh, various declarations that we have at uh, various points, uh, whether it's uh, the Vidui uh, Maser, whether it's Havat Bikurim. There are different times where there are things that we say that are, call them uh, liturgical of a sort. But the only time we have the word bracha in terms of every single Jew should do this and every single time uh, is vachalta v'svata uveirachta. The only other one that might make the grade is birchot ha-Torah. That's again, beyond the scope of what we have time for today. This whole thing is beyond the scope. Excuse me, this by way of, uh, of introduction for consideration as we uh, move through these brachot. Our focus today is on the bracha of, uh, of Shechianu. And uh, there are different times when we say Shechianu. Of course, um, we'll start to uh, analyze some of them today, but I thought to jump into it, and we all have an idea of some of the times when we recite it, we should look at the actual uh, sources themselves in, uh, in the Gemara. I put that up on the screen, so you're welcome to look in with me. And again, I beg your indulgence just a few more minutes. Let me get some of the basic lay of the land laid out. Again, unlike a Tanakh shir or even a Gemara shir, where we're focused on one particular story or section of, uh, of Chazal, uh, a story in Tanakh or a section of Chazal, here we're really focusing on various points because the topic is what uh, is uh, animating us. So uh, here we have the Gemara Masachet Eruvin, uh, which has the following question. Um, do we recite the bracha of Shechianu, which is referred to in Chazal, as Chazal referred to it as the Birkat Hazman. After all, the syntax of it, Shehechianu, the Kiyamanu, Vihigianu, Lazman Hazeh. Right? We're thanking Hashem that He has uh, kept us alive and He has sustained us and He has caused us to arrive at this time or this season. That's what the word Zman is. And therefore, in the shorthand of it, instead of calling it Shechianu, it's called Zman. Everybody knows that we recite these brachos, uh, the bracha of Zman, on the three holidays, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. Each of those holidays have a mitzvah of Simcha uh, connected to them. The source sheets are right over there. The mitzvah of, uh, of um, Simcha 
is part of those three holidays. V'samachta b'chagecha. That's a mitzvah on those three holidays to be joyous. And that is expressed in various ways. One of them is the Birkat Azman is recited. In the Gemara here, Masechet Erevin, the question comes up, what about Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur? After all, there are much more serious days. Uh, there are days that thematically may or may not have components of simcha to them, but they don't have the mitzvah of simcha in the same way, certainly, and maybe not at all, probably not at all, uh, although there is a discussion about Rosh Hashanah at least, about whether they're is, about you know, having any aspect of simcha to them. After all, we're being judged. Uh, hopefully we're getting forgiven for sins, the day of atonement, etc. So you have Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippurim. Ba'ama Rava, Rava, ki havina bey, Ravuna ibo'elon. I'm on page two at the top, right? So we were we were visiting with uh, the house in the house of Rav Huna, and we asked the following question: Ma lomar zman Rosh Hashanah v'yom Kippurim, right? What should we uh, what should we do? Should we recite it or not? Now, by the by, you could stop me now and say, wait, when you look in the Sefer Torah in the twenty third parak of Sefer Vayikra, there's a list of holidays, and those holidays don't skip Rosh Hashanah v'yom Kippur. Au contraire, they're in the mix of all the holidays, and indeed, they're all under the banner of um, holidays that you could uh, call, generally speaking, Mikra Kodesh. It's less uh, 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 sure that this is what we're talking about, that, that that's the reality here, is we're asking a question about Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippurim. Uh, are they really in the same category? Isn't that bracha presupposes that the bracha of Shechiyan of Akimanu is somehow an expression maybe of joy that we don't have in Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur because the theme isn't there? Or maybe it has to do with the reality that while all of the holidays are generally called Mikra Kodesh, the ones that are specifically Mikra Kodesh are the Shalash Regalim. Here's what the Gemara says. So here's one side of the coin. Kevin de Mizman Lizman Ate Amrinan. Maybe you could argue that since it happens episodically, meaning from time to time, from season to season, it's not every day, it's not every week, it's not every month. By the way, I'll throw in parenthetically, today is Rosh Chodesh. We recited Hallel. Why don't we say Shachian on Hallel? The answer is because it happens too many times in the year. Uh, we just can't keep reciting it over and over again. It's tw it's 12 times in the year just for Rosh Chodesh, and then you throw in all the days of Yom Tovim. There's many, many such days. But, so the Gemara here says, well, maybe the fact that it is once a year, we have Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we should recite Shechianu, Odilma, or maybe Kevin Delo Ikru Regalim Lo Amrinan. Maybe the fact that they're not called Regalim, the Shalosh Regalim, Pesach, Shavon, and Sukkot, and they're not in that category, maybe we don't recite it. They didn't know the answer. Lo they, 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 they didn't really seem to know what, what the answer was. Rav Huna couldn't tell them. Kiatai Bey Rav Yehuda Amar, when they came to the, the house of Rav Yehuda, you know what he told them? And here's uh, the only Thanksgiving reference of the entire shir, but it is apt. Ana akra chadata nami amina zman. When I see a new pumpkin growing in the field, I recite Shechianu. So just listen to those words again. When I see the pumpkin, a kra is a pumpkin or a gourd uh, growing in the field. That's when I make the bracha. So it's something about the experience of seeing it that is, and it's obviously seasonal because it has to do with something growing. So that's when I say the bracha. So the Gemara says, Amar le reshut lo kame bayale. Ki kame bayale, right? Chova. When, I, when the question was being asked, when Rabbah says, I asked that question, I wasn't asking, are you allowed to make the bracha? I was asking, is it an obligation to make the bracha? Amar le Rav Shmuel da'amir tarvayu, ein omer zman, ela b'shalosh regalim. So the response from Rav Yehuda was, I heard from Rav and Shmuel, we only recite zman, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot on those holiday days. That's when we recite it. I'm not talking, by the way, the Gemara is not speaking about the Shechianu that's recited on a specific mitzvot. We'll get to that. We're not up to that yet. Just on the holidays themselves, right? So the Gemara, essentially, this part of it at least, concludes that there is such a thing as Shechianu that should be recited on holidays, but those holidays are only Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. And it threw in a little story, which turns out to be an important aspect of this halacha. There is also a time when we can recite the bracha of Shechianu, overseeing the growth of something, mizman lizman, seasonally. And by the by, that's not an obligation. It's only a reshut. It's something volitional, voluntary. However, that was translated by Sincino. I didn't look. Um, yep, yeah, you didn't ask what was permitted to recite it. Right. I asked whether it was obligatory. Okay, good. Okay. Now, 
What I didn't give you for want of time is the Gemara has a whole discussion back and forth. Really? Not on Rosh Hashanah, not a Yom Kippur? And it goes back and forth and essentially by the end of the conversation has uh, reinstated Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippurim as also worthy of the Birkat Hazman, also worthy of the Bracha of Shachianu, which is why on the nights, the nights of Rosh Hashanah, we recite Shachianu, which is why in Yom Kippur, we stand in shul together and we recite Shechianu, right? If a woman were to recite to Shechianu when she lights the candles on Yom Kippur, she would have accepted the fast already. So we try to remind the women, don't say the Shechianu bracha at home, A, because then you can't uh, get in a car after Altanai. Your, your lighting cannot be conditional. You accept it, Itzum uh, Shalyom. Number two, you're losing out on everybody saying it together, right, as a group. Sometimes it happens. The woman makes a mistake. Okay, she can't go in the car, etc. Remember that also on the second night of Rosh Hashanah, most of us have on our table a fruit for Kiddush, a new fruit. So it's a little bit far afield to start going into all the mechanics of why that is so. I'll give you the 30-second uh, the edition and just don't hold me to the 30 seconds because it may be actually a full minute. It goes like this. Each of the holidays, we have an institutionalized, I repeat, institutionalized second day called Sveika de Yoma. It's called Sveika de Yoma. It's not because we don't really know that, what date is on the calendar, but that's what the Chachamim instituted, to call it Sveika de Yoma. Therefore, the second night of Yantov, Pasach, Shavuot, Sukkot, we say Shechianu because it's the second night, but it may be the first night. Again, in quotation marks, institutionalized suffix. On Rosh Hashanah, the Gemara says that Rosh Hashanah is Yuma Arichta. It's halachically like one long day. If you say that it's halachically speaking, like one long day of two of 48 hours duration, how can you say Shechinu the second night? Lemaisa, if someone told me I don't have a new fruit, I would tell them, okay, it's still going to say the Shechinu the second night. Why? Because that's Minig Yisrael, and that's what the halacha is. But many of us have a Minig that the second night, already when the women are lighting the candles, uh, they put on the table or in front of the candles, they put a new fruit. And when the Kiddush will be recited afterward, all together with the family, what's on the table? A new fruit. Just like we just saw in the Gemara. Ana akra charata nami amina zman. It doesn't have to be a gourd, because we probably have gourds on the table before and after. To us, a gourd is no longer once a year, right? But if we have a new fruit, we put it on the table, and it's in our presence. When we say the bracha of Shachiana, we have in mind for the fruit. That's what's going on, Rosh Hashanah, with the Kiddush. Anyway, by the end of the Gemara's discussion, where it did not discuss any of these things, so uh, this was just sort of a sidebar to try to understand a little more about Shechianu, the Gemara has a conclusion. The Hilchata Omer Zman Rosh Hashanah of Yom Kippurim, still in that Gemara at the top. We do say Shechianu on Rosh Hashanah and on Yom Kippur. And further, the Gemara says, the Hilchata Zman Omro Afilu Bashuk. The truth is, you could even recite the Shechianu Bracha on any of the holidays. Pesach, Shavuot, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot. Where? In the shuk, in the marketplace. You're walking down the street on Yom Tov, you could say Shechianu Bracha. Um, the Gemara that I skipped, talking about how important it is that you should have a cup of wine, it should be on the Kiddush, etc., which is what we do, except on Yom Kippur, we don't have a choice. Um, although there is a discussion there also made to bring a cup to shul and have the Bracha made on a cup. Not We don't do that in the end. But... Um, that's the conclusion of the Gemara. Um, so um, this leaves us with um, a, a few point, points to ponder. First of all, the Shulchan Aruch, I gave it to you in Simon Reish Chav Hei Seiv Gimel. The Shulchan Aruch tells us that a person who sees a new fruit that renews once a year, you haven't seen it, obviously, in the year. Doesn't mean you went, if you went to grocery store and you saw it, then too bad. So Mavarak Shachianu. Right? Or al Ilan, even if it's still in, the, in your friend's hand or it's in the tree, still make the bracha. However, the minig is achila. The minig is not to make the bracha until we actually come to eat the food, the, the, the new fruit. Okay. By the by, it's not just a fruit, but it'll be a vegetable as well. It would apply for both. The Rama added to the Shulchan Aruch. If you actually made the bracha when you saw it the first time, that would be good enough. Uh, it has to be a ripe fruit, the Rama adds. Okay. And uh, if you even forgot to do it the first time you see it, if you saw it the second time, you could probably make the bracha as well. Again, the minag, and this is the Mishnah Brewer now tells us, that um, we make this bracha really when we eat it, not when we see it. That's the minag, even though technically you could. Also, the Rama throws, the, the Mishnah Brewer, excuse me, reminds us that it's not a a, an oblig obligation, it's a reshut. Yilmavarach lome anish. 
you're not going to get punished for not making the brach. It's not like you made a mistake. Uh, but but nonetheless, you should try to take care that you're going to recite this bracha. Um, but it's it's optional. It's not obligatory. It's permissible, but it's not it's not an obligation. Okay. Now, um, what is it about it that's permissible? It has to do somewhat, perhaps, with our visceral reaction of joy that we're seeing it. Oh, it came back. Oh, I'm happy to see it. Um, that's one consideration. Um, in this section of Shulchan Aruch, I did not give you, there's a whole other realm um, in uh, Reish Chav Gimel, a, a, a time of, uh, of birth uh, of a child, right? So the Mr. Burra says, uh, someone will see their, uh, I think it's the Mr. Burra quotes this, when someone will, it's like you're seeing an old friend, so to speak, you know, if you see a, a baby that was born, you're there when the baby's actually born. So there's a bracha that's recited, a birchat, uh, birchat hoda that's recited. A uh, person hasn't seen their friend in 30 days on the books. Uh, they should say bracha shechianu when they see them again. But that's mostly mitigated nowadays. Why? So many of the posts can say, because you can communicate with them if you want wow. to, in most cases. Uh, when would it happen? If they went out to the Amazon, not Amazon.com, but the Amazon, the Amazon, and they were disappeared. And you couldn't see them for 30 days, you really would make the bracha shechiana. But nowadays, they the most posts can talk about using the mail. Uh, you could say now calling on the phone, you could say texting, you could say FaceTime, you could say seeing on social media, whatever it is. If you were totally out of touch, it might be there's a bracha of shechiana. I see your hand, Shelly. Give me one, two more minutes to finish this section. Uh, I, I know there are questions about it. Hold on, hold on, I'm just finishing. I'm still setting this up. Okay. Um, and also permutations about it. It's a little bit farther afield than we have time for now. We're sticking to the fruits today and to uh, we're going to get to Hanukkah in two minutes. So um, the uh, the uh, Mishnah Bura confirms for us the uh, what I said before about the idea that it's reshut, that it's volitional, that one makes the brach shachianu in the next sifkat, sifkat and yod, even if you saw it in your friend's hand, you make the brach just for seeing it. Why? The ikara nitkan al simchat alev shemesamech al tzmichat prichadash. You're happy. That there is uh, there's some new fruit that grew, yeah. Now, um, the um, the Mishabura then throws in that the truth is when you make this bracha, why do we say that the minag is now that we don't make the bracha until you eat it? The Mishabura explains what the Shulchan Aruch means mean that most people when they see it are not not going to be so happy when they see it. Most people are just going to be happy when they actually take a bite of it. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we say lekuli amav varach rak achilato lekach naagu tamid beze mishum lo pluk. It's true, you may subjectively be one of those kinds of people. When you see a new fruit, ah, oh, you're so happy. I haven't seen that thing in a year. I'm so happy to see it. But uh, but because of the fact that a lot of people are not that way, they're much happier only when they take a bite of it, and that everyone's happy when they take a bite of it. So therefore, uh, we say that everyone should wait and defer until the moment when they're going to actually eat the fruit. By the by, um, while there are those who maintain that maybe you should make the bracha ha'etz or hadama, then say shachianu, then take a bite. The Mishnah Bura suggests that the best thing to do would be to make the bracha shachianu when you have it like in your hand, and then say the bracha birkat ananin ha'etz ha'adama, and then take a bite of it, um, and and so on and so forth. Um, if someone made a mistake, they said the bracha and then they said ha the shachianu, then they ate. So that that would be uh, that would not be a, a, a half sake. Indeed, the Mishnah Bura quotes that as well. Would also be okay, not as good, but okay. And he mentioned, and the mention I should mention now, there are Sephardi poskim who also maintain that that's actually how it should be done. Um, so this is a little bit about new fruits, seeing them, the experience of them, uh, eating them, and the like. And that's section one. We'll do section two in a moment. Let me take some questions, comments. Shelly, please go ahead. Unmute yourself because I can't hear you otherwise. Okay. Um two two points uh one is um i'm a big walker outside now because of covid no gym whatever uh, a week ago i saw a cherry tree near me that's budding again okay it's got it's got its buds for you know and, and i noticed that last year that a lot of trees bloom actually once they lose their their leaves they get these little buds well i get really excited because i hate winter and i hate it when the trees the leaves fall okay so i'm getting really i'm getting huge joy from this like okay Great. another couple months it'll be but you're saying i have a reshoot to say shechianu when I do that, but it's actually better to wait until I actually eat the cherry, which will give me to the second question, which is, 
in a global economy, we can get cherries, asparagus, broccoli, all of this stuff that we used to get only one season a year. We get it all year long. So how can you ever say Shekhyanu if right. you buy right. fruits and vegetables? Good. All- good, good. I got it. Okay. On the first point, um, that's right. When you would see it, first of all, there's something in Chodesh Nisan, which is beyond the scope of what we have now, which is when you see the, the, the fruit trees that are blossoming to say a bracha, right? There's a special bracha, Birkada Ilan. That's like another off-ramp, can't go there. I would tell you practically, number one, the fact that cherries is not their season, they're happening, happening, it's happening now for whatever reason, but you know, it existed earlier and you probably saw it in the store or you don't remember, whatever it is. And the fact that the Minika Olam now is not to make the bracha shechina when you see it. Nowadays, we would say, if you haven't eaten it in a year, you could say the bracha shechina, even if you saw it in the store. And yes, and the question comes up, what about fruits and vegetables that quite frankly, they came from the freezer? They, they were they were put away, right? It's eight months old. It's not in season, but it showed up in your store. If you haven't eaten it in a year, that's practically what we tell people. When you are going to eat it, you say shechianu, then you make the bracha on the fruit uh, or the vegetable, and then you eat it. If you never ate such a fruit or vegetable in your life, so then also, same thing. You never ate it. You never had that experience. Then you do make that bracha. Or if you haven't had it in a solid year, you yeah? So, uh, but it's not anymore really about the seeing. I would tell you though, uh, uh, you know, it's wonderful that you that you have such a visceral reaction when you see them. And that's why David Amalek wrote a safer uh, uh, sitter for us. And if you see, uh, just just say a little a little chapter. It's not so short, but chapter 104, Jewish people saying it always on Rosh, Rosh Chodesh, but you could say it any time. That's Marabu Masach Hashem. Uh, how, how many, uh, uh, how vast are your works, uh, Hashem? You made everything with wisdom. Uh, and uh, and there's so many ways that we have, uh, uh, as the well, that's already the coin from Lublin interpretation. But uh, you, the world is filled with your with your possessions, yeah, with 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 your possessions. The vil, the coin from Lublin says malar uh, kinyanecha means the world is filled with opportunities to be able to uh, to uh, uh, acquire a relationship with you. Essentially, I'm paraphrasing, but something like that. Malar kinyanecha because the word kinyan means. Uh, I mean, something that was created by someone, the kone hakol, creation. But he took it like kinyan, kinyanecha, like things that are k- possessed by you. But it also means our ability to have a kinyan with you. A little bit of drush I threw into a halacha here. Okay. But that, that's what I would say practically. And I hope that answered your second question as well. That's correct. This is a moving target. Because the availability of fruits and vegetables in the store and the fact that we live at a time and a place of plenty means that we're going to have many fewer things on the list. Um, you know, that uh, used to be a person, certainly I, I know, I heard from uh, people from uh, previous generations in, who lived in Europe, a banana showed up in the community, right? Uh, my Zayda Zichon Livracha, not the one for whom this year is, but my other Zayda Zichon Livracha, uh, described how if they brought out an orange in his uh, native uh, town of Koval, they took out an orange to feed someone, they must be extremely ill. And they're giving them something because they know there's some medicinal property to the orange, uh, circa you know 1920s, 1930s, right? So, 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 uh, but to us, this is um, this is what we see all, all the time. If we're willing to pay for it, we can get almost anything anytime, right? A kiwi. I mean, these kinds of things uh, to, to uh, uh, previous generations, not so long ago, were really quite uh, quite something. Uh, and it was a real experience to see it, to to look at it, to to, to take a bite of it. Again, Lamaisa today, it's really on the taking the bite. But we should just consider that it is a diminishing, uh, uh, um, a, a diminishing uh, uh, a playing field. It is fewer. Well, what fewer do you do on the second day of Yontef when you're supposed to make the bracha, um, either the kiddush or the uh, uh, lighting candles with uh, with the fruit when there is no fruit that you haven't eaten in 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 a year. Would a variety of fruit be okay? In other words, you would, you would have to go right. No, no, no. You, the, so the answer is, if you had no such fruit, I would still tell that person, yes, make the brach of shachiyana. Because I'm trying to explain to you that there's a, a case to be made that you still make it the second of Rosh Hashanah because that's the halacha, right? But because of their, the fact that the Gemara says that it's one long, elongated day, ergo we say, you know what? It'll be better. If you just at least did one other thing to show that, like your shechin was also on the fruit. So no, there, there are exotic fruits that uh, I'm not saying you have to stay away from during the year. I tend to stay away from them personally. So once a year they come out um, I, I, at the at the tables. I haven't I haven't eaten it again. But that's why it, the point is 
It's on the table when you make these brachas because there is some aspect of this that used to be uh, and might still be about seeing it, laying eyes on it. I, but I saw it in the store the whole rest of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm putting it down. I'm going to eat it. I'm planning to eat it. So I'm saying like, it's, it's a shechiano on the fruit I'm going to eat. That, that's the idea. Let me move a little bit, uh, little bit uh, forward here just for want of time. We're not going to get too far into the bottom of page two, the Mishnah in Masachet Brachot, which tells us all about the, br- br- uh, excuse me, Birchot Hariya, blessings when you see things phenomena, a response to being somewhere and experiencing something. You see a place where miracles happen. Uh, you go to a place where there used to be a Vodazar that was taken away. You see uh, a, a meteor. You see, uh, you hear a thunder. You see lightning, uh, whatever it is, right? There, there are blessings for all these things. I mentioned seeing uh, very high mountains, uh, seeing uh, various different natural phenomena. And here we're back to... Um, uh, uh, Shelley's question from before, there is a bracha called Baruch Osa Masa Breshit. You would not recite that on fruit trees. They're in like a separate category. These things, harim, gevaud, yamim, naharot. Uh, Rabbi, miharot, Rabbi, isn't there, isn't there a tova hametiv we say, don't we? Uh, when you see something. Uh, uh, no, no, not necessarily. I'm glad you brought that up. Tova hametiv is like the bracha of Shechianu, but it's Shechianu plus one. Uh, uh, means we're thanking God who's benevolent and who causes benevolence means whatever this thing is now that I'm making the bracha as a result of is going to benefit others as well. But that's not that's not a result of seeing these these objects. Atova there are different times. I don't want to go again, another off ramp, the world of Atova Metiv. You know, what about that? There's all it's a family, right? So I'm just focusing today on Shachem. I'm just mentioning, by the way, since Shelly brought up about saying the bracha, you know, when you see the beautiful uh, trees. It's not the bracha of Osa Masa It has to be something that is essentially from the time of Masa Breshi, not something that keeps growing uh, on an annual basis. That we have a separate bracha for. Osa Masa Breshi is more landscape, et cetera, right? You see the ocean, et cetera. And the last thing on the list, for our purposes today at least, is Banabait Chadash Vakana Kelim Chadashim. If you built a new house or you bought new vessels, new vessels or new clothing, you would say a bracha Shechiyan Vakiman 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 Yeah? That's that's the bracha that would be recited at that uh, at that time, and of course, and of course, it's a sheer in and of itself. The Gemara has a whole discussion. The Halacha has a whole discussion. Does okay, it mean if you built? Uh, someone just unmuted themselves, and I can't hear myself talking because someone else is talking. So just uh, you just mute yourself. There you go. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, okay, good. I'll take more questions in a few minutes. Let me just give me give me a few more minutes here because we're running out of time for the sheer. You build a new house versus you bought a new house versus you renovated a house. These are all different halachic permutations. Again, I don't have time to give you every single thing. Kalim Chadashim, again, it's a smaller a smaller bandwidth for what's included here. Any new vessel that you buy, you go out and buy some plates, you make a shechianu, really? No, it has to be significant purchase. What's a significant purchase? So, so significant clothing. What about shoes? No, not on shoes. What about if you're a pauper and you never owned a pair of shoes and you were always borrowing someone else's shoes and now you have your own pair? Do you now say a shechianu? A lot of halachic permutations that come up. Rav Moshe Feinstein uh, himself, he poskins when you buy a new car, he says shechianu. He thinks uh, you have to make shechianu on it. Where's the nafkamina? What Can you buy a new car during the three weeks before Tisha B'av? We're not supposed to recite a shechianu, et cetera, et cetera. It's a whole, a whole discussion. I guess that's another shear for another time. You know, what do you make a shechianu and what not? The general rule is, I tell people, so tachlis, bottom line, uh, in terms of clothing, it will be something you would wear to a wedding. For a man, a suit, for a woman, a gown, a dress. It has to be something fancy that they would, that they would wear. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it would not obtain for other things. All things being equal, it would really not uh, obtain, uh, but, but just for, for consideration. And did it when a person um, uh, buys a house, they certainly do not say shechiano. They can make other brachas. They can bring brachas into the home. They're going to put up a mezuzah and say brachas on that, but they're not going to say on the, on the building of the new house itself uh, and the like. That's a whole other realm within halacha. What I want to focus on for the last few minutes today, which is, of course, in my mind's eye, was going to be most of the shear, but, you know, still haven't figured out how to do the timing right, is the fact that we're going to make a bracha on one of the two days that is actually not mentioned whatsoever in the Gemara that we saw at the beginning of this year. On all of the holidays, Pesach, Shavuot, on the holiday of uh, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, we're going to say the bracha of Shechianu. What two holidays are not mentioned on that list? One of them is about to happen. Hanukkah and Purim. Purim. Right, exactly. Good, good. Sorry, I, I preempted, but Ira, Ira gets the point. 
<laughs> right? Chanukah and Purim. Do you say Shachianu Chanukah and Purim? The Gemara could have said Shachianu and Purim. Uh, could have said Shachianu and Chanukah. It didn't. So do you say Shachianu? Well, we do say Shachianu on Chanukah, don't we? First night. First night, when we light the candles and when we read the Megillah, we say Shachianu, right? But there's a bit of a question that's left over there. And the question is, wait a second, when we pick up the shofar, do we say Shachianu? What about the lulav, first day? Yes, yes to both. We also say Shachianu on a Dvar Mitzvah that we haven't done, uh, uh, Mizman Lizman, from season to season. So when we say the Shachianu on Hanukkah, we say Shachianu on Purim, why are we saying that Shachianu? Are we saying it because it's a holiday? Or are we saying it because of the Dvar Mitzvah? Who cares? Well, here's the practical case of the Gemara. The Gemara describes the top now of page three. You have to make a bracha. What's the bracha? Okay. Rabbi Yirmiya says, when I see the Hanukkah candles, I have to make a bracha. Amarav Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says, on the first day, if you saw the, um, the candles being lit through the open window, or a closed window, rather. But you saw the candles being lit by someone else, you would make two brachas. And if you were the one lighting, you would recite three brachas. What two brachas are we referring to here on the first day if you're seeing but not actually lighting? Right? Well, it can't be the bracha lahadlik near shalchanika because you're not actually lighting. Someone else is doing the action. But what are the two brachas? You're seeing but not lighting. You're saying the bracha shasanisim lavotein by by me mahem bazman hazeh about the zman bazman hazeh and the nace the miracle, and then you make another bracha shechianu v'kiyamanu v'kiyanu la zman hazeh. The one who lights the candles makes all three brachas. Mikan ve'elach means on the other nights of Hanukkah madlik mevarach shtayim. That's what we do. Shechisham stol tzvan halik nishal Hanukkah and shasanisim v'ro mevarach achat. What's the achat shasanisim? The Gemara asks my memayit. Which of the two brachas is going to be skipped by the person who is outside? Memayed Zman, we skip Shachianu on the subsequent nights, right? The Gemara has a Havamina, means the Gemara considers the possibility that maybe on the subsequent nights of the holiday, the Nimot Nes, maybe we should skip out on the bracha of the Nes, of Sha'asanisin. And the Gemara answers, Nes Koyome Ete. No, the miracle was a new miracle each day, meaning it was a new miracle because it was added another day that, it, that the oil lasted. So uh, every day was another aspect of it. But what are we going to skip on all the other days? We're going to skip Zman, the bracha of Zman. Because we said the bracha of Zman when? On the first night. The bracha of Shechin was on the first night. Just like, take an example, on the first night of Sukkot, or the first night of Pe nights of Pesach, we're going to say Shachianu, but on night number six, you're not going to say Shachianu on Pesach. You know why? Because you said it at the beginning of the holiday. At the beginning of the holiday. As opposed to the miracle, which the whole point is, that's why we dynamically light one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to show there's, there's a nace every single day. Rashi, commenting of what does it mean, Haroe, is you're passing through in the marketplace and you see in one of the courtyards, it's lighting, right? So, that's that's the reality, right? You're making that bracha. Rashi throws in the names of his um, of his rebbeim. Umatzad Rishim Rabbeinu Yitzchak Ben Yehuda Sheomer Mishem Rabbi Rabbeinu Yaakov. Do lo huzkaka bracha zu el lemish lo hidlik beveto adayin. Oh, liyoshe besfina. This bracha, the idea that you're seeing it and you're going to recite two brachas, is for someone who is uh, um, uh, did not have anyone light in their home for them. So in other words, if you're traveling, at least Rashi thinks, if you're traveling, you saw someone else lighting, but you know in your household, someone's lighting for you, you don't have to make those brachas. Or if you're out on a ship. So does Rashi mean you're out on a ship like it's at port? Or it means two ships are passing and someone in the other ship is lighting? Or does it mean you're out at sea and nobody's lighting? Which of those options? Rashi doesn't tell us. The two brachas that we recite by someone outside, she'asanisim v'shachianu, right? And you can't make the bracha of lahadlik because that person's not lighting. Okay? Okay. 
And the Gemara says, Rashi says that what it, the Gemara means is, if you're lighting on the other days, which bracha of the three are you going to skip out? Are you going to skip Shechianu or are you going to skip Sha'asanisim? No, we're going to skip the bracha of Sha'asanis of, of, of Shechianu, right? Because the nase is every single day, right? Shahari Kol Shmona, all eight days, they lit from the, the cruise of oil. Aval Zman, Mishihigianu, Atchalat Zman, Higiu. But when it comes to the bracha of Zman, of Shechianu, since we arrived at the beginning of the time period, we've arrived. We say Shechianu just that one time. In other words, Rashi seems to be saying, we're going to recite the bracha of Shechianu, maybe at the time when the lighting of the candles happens, but it seems to have something to do with the onset of the holiday itself. And that's why we're making the bracha. Aval zman, the bracha of zman, mishihigianu lehatchalat zman, higianu. He brought us to that time. We're done. As if it was like the onset of a Yom Tov. Mm -hmm. So this is a bit of a question. What is the nature of the bracha of Shechianu? Is it on the Kedushat Zman, on the sanctity of time? Well, there's no sanctity of time in the same way that there is on the Yom Tovim. Or is it on the Mitzvah? Right? I say there's no sanctity of time because you're allowed to do Malacha. Right? There's no Kedushat Hayom. Tosfot, a Tosfot that some of us on this call learned together not too long ago, uh, the Gemara and Sukkah and Daf Memvav, points out that um, as someone who's quoting the same Gemara, as you know how Gemara works, the same piece of Gemara can appear in three, four, five places in Shas. So the same piece that I just showed you, the top of this page from Masachet Shabbat, essentially appears in Masachet Sukkah as well in another context. It's brought in sort of as uh, exhibit A, sort of to prove a point. But uh, if you see the, the candles of Hanukkah, if you make a bracha, right? Tosfot say, Bishar mitzvah kegon, alul of a sukkah, lot akinu levarech l'roeh. When it comes to other mitzvahs, like lulav, like sukkah, there's no bracha when you see the mitzvah happening. Someone else is holding the lulav. You don't have to make a bracha. You're doing the mitzvah, you're not doing the mitzvah. But you're not going to make a bracha, or I don't know what, she'asa mitzvah lulav or something. We don't have a bracha like that. But, on account of, when it comes to Hanukkah, we have some another factor, and that is that it is incredibly beloved. The miracle is very beloved to us. So people love Hanukkah. They see it, oh, wonderful. They want to make a bracha. So Chazal made a special bracha, Sha'asa Nesim. Reason number one. Reason number two. And also, there are people who simply do not have homes. They're homeless. Or they're traveling. Or whatever it is, they don't have a house. And they can't fulfill the mitzvah. So there's a separate bracha that they can, um, they can, um, they can recite. I'll skip the rest of Tosot now for want of time. But he gives Tosot, the Bali Tosot rather, give two reasons, right? Chanukah, when you see it, because Chavibu Danes, it's beloved to us, right? Uh, at number one. Number two, because it's possible that a person doesn't have a house and they're not going to be able to fulfill this mitzvah. I think these two reasons are actually linked. Tosfot likes the first answer better. This one over here, Chamishim Chavi Uranais, likes much better. For Hanukkah, much better than the, the second answer for reasons we won't go into now. Look with me at the Shulchan Aruch. Bottom line, Shulchan Aruch. If you like, when you, Amadli Bilal Rishim Varach Shalash Brachot, Lahalik Nishul Hanukkah, Vishasin Vishachim, three brachas on the first night of Hanukkah. Okay? I have five minutes left, so I beg your indulgence. Let me just focus, and I'm happy to take questions, comments, and those who want to leave can leave, but I just want to, okay. V'im, everyone's got to get ready for tonight, so I don't want to stop them up. V'im l'berach z'man b'lal rishon, v'varach b'lal sheni, ok she'yizkor. If you didn't say Shechianu on the first night, you would say Shechianu on the second night, or when you remember. That's when you say Shechianu. But we'll see the, or when you remember, it's going to have a caveat in a moment, that the later post game didn't all agree with that, but Everyone does agree. If you didn't, for some reason, say Shechianu the first night, you would say it the second night. Halacha bet. Milel rishon ve'elach mvarach shtayim l'halik shasanisim. Right? And the Ramah adds, you make all the brachas before you start the lighting. That's the Ramah writes. Now, now let's look at Siv Gimel. That's what we've been learning about. Page three, bottom paragraph. Mishlo hidlik. Ve'no atit l'hadik v'oto alayla. You didn't light, and you're not intending to light that night. V'gam eimad likin alav betok beito. Also, nobody's lighting for you in your house. So you have a house, someone, no one's there, no one's going to light in it. 
So when you see it in the street, that's the bracha you make. But in the first night, what else do you also add? You don't make the bracha shachianu afterward. By the way, my Rabbi Shlomo Zaman Orbach is quoted in the Sefer Ner Ish Ubeito, which I saw quoted in the Piskei Tzuvot, saying that if you, on the first night, are sure you're not going to be able to light Hanukkah candles, and you're pretty positive that's the case, and you saw someone else's Hanukkah candles, you make the bracha she'asanisim, you make the bracha she'achianu, and then you get you end up getting to a place where you can light Hanukkah candles, you just recite one bracha, the bracha of L'Halik Nesho Hanukkah. You don't recite the two brachas again. You said them already. Done. Finished. Right? Now, uh, what the Shulchan Aruch is saying here, the bottom source here is, if you're not going to light and nobody's lighting for you, you say the two brachas, okay? When you see the, the candles. Here's another question for a thought experiment, top of page four. What if you will not see any Hanukkah candles? What if Rashi meant you're literally out at, on the ocean and, and you're not gonna, there's nothing, it's not gonna happen. So would you still just recite Shechianu because it's Hanukkah and you're celebrating? You can't say the bracha of Halik uh, Hanukkah, you're not lighting. Can't say Shasanisim, you didn't see the miracle, the lights lit, Zechel So what do you have? Maybe just the Shechianu by itself. The Prichadash says, no. The Prichadash says, Hach Shechianu lo nitkan ela ha'adlaka o la Right? Um, and if not, no bracha, no Shechianu. And he says, it's true. It's true that we learned the Gemara Masachet Erevin that says that you could, in the end, you could even make the bracha shachen standing in the marketplace. That was only, he says, when on a holiday that is itself called a regal by the Torah. What the Gemara was debating is what's on the list of being a regal. Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur? In a general sense, yes. There are special mitzvahs on those days. The mitzvahs include prohibitions on malacha. Include in the case of three out of the five, include Aliyah Larega going up to Yerushalayim, offering certain korbanot, etc., korban musaf. On the holidays of Hanukkah and Purim, we don't have any of that. So he just basically says, you know, it's not gonna, it's it's it doesn't it doesn't um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't doesn't work, yeah, uh, uh, because because there's no kedusha of the uh, of the of the time. Um, okay, so that's that's the prechadash. The Me'iri, who lived considerably before the Prichadash, he disagrees. He says, actually, at least in Masachet Shabbat, Some say, And each and every night, you say, Even without Shechianu, each and every night. Why? And it actually makes sense, he says. He, he thinks it makes sense. He'd say the Shechen whenever he would come to light. But he at least has the, um, the, uh, the possibility that he raises here as a commentary on Masachet Shabbat that maybe indeed you should. Why? Because maybe there's something special specifically about Hanukkah that gives it its own character. And that character is perhaps something that remain, renders it unique. And that even in the shuk, you can make a bracha. I'm happy we got to this time period. Elsewhere, the same Me'iri, Rabbeinu Menachem HaMe'iri, in his commentary on Masachet Megillah, which I didn't give you, seems to say the other way. He seems to contradict himself. We can't get into the back and forth. I just wanted to show you, like, there are ideas here and there. By the by, uh, practically, uh, I would tell someone who asked me, Rabbi, I'm not going to see, I'm not going to be, etc. I would tell them, please, you don't make such a bracha. You'll say, uh, you'll say uh, alanisim or something, but you shouldn't add in the um, the, the the these brachas shasanisim shachianu because you don't actually have the um, you don't have the the dvar mitzvah in front of you. If you look at the shulchan arach here at the mishnah brewer, rather, he points out that when we saw earlier, when you remember later. You know, uh, you should say the bracha of uh, Shachianu. He doesn't actually mean just by itself. Uh, um, he, he thinks it has to be uh, that it's the neck for the next night and the next night of lighting. That's when you're going to say Shachianu. You forgot to say it the first night. So when you remember means to the next night, you should also you should then say Shachianu. You forgot the first night for some reason, right? First night you're busy, Sunday night this year, you forgot, you said two brachas, you lit, and you remembered after the lighting. Oh, too late because you already lit. So the Shulchan says, wait till tomorrow night. Mishnah Burr says, wait till tomorrow night. That's what you say, the Shachianu. Meaning, it has to be somehow connected to the mitzvah of Hanukkah itself. 
the pitche, the share, uh, shar hatsiyun, uh, uh, we don't have time to see the whole thing inside, but he basically, he, he propounds the possibility based on the Me'iri that, you know what, mm, maybe actually um, it's supposed to be at the time of the, of the lighting of the candles, just like it's supposed to be that on Pesach, Shavuot, Sukkot, and Rosh Hashanah, it's when you make Kiddush. But if you couldn't do that, the truth is the Gemara in Erevin does say, you could even say the Bracha Shechianu in the Shuk, and he says, maybe actually, maybe actually you'll, You'll, you, you should you, you, you'd be allowed to make that uh, that bracha. Maybe there is a case to be made. He quotes uh, in the name of the Yeshua Yaakov that uh, who says this. In the end, he says though tzarich ion, which basically means we have to look into this further. Which is I'm not really so sure. Um, so I'm saying practically, if someone did not see and could not see and would not see, I think uh, most posts can hold you would not make the bracha of shachianu just like that in the shuk for Hanukkah and for Purim. Just in closing. Um, when you look at the Hemek She'ela the, in Parshat um, Vayishlach in the She'ilta, he describes that uh, perhaps there is something here that's a split screen, uh, Hanukkah and Purim. But let's talk about Hanukkah for that's our, that's our purpose tonight. There's a bracha on the Nes Hatzalah, I'm being saved, and there's the bracha on the Nes of the, of the Neirot. The bracha of the Nes Hatzalah, being saved, is Shechianu. The bracha on the Nes of the Neirot that is the bracha of Sha'asa Nisim. So the Neirot is every single night. So therefore, every single night, we're saying the bracha of Sha'asa Nisim when we see someone else lighting, even if we're not lighting ourselves. But the bracha Shechianu, that's on the first night. You know why? Because that's on the nace of the Hatzala, right? That's, um, that's on the nace of, of having been uh, been saved. And the Shilta, Shil, in this uh, Hemek She'ela, the Nitziv is writing, basically, there is an aspect of thanksgiving Zman, Birkata Zman, a bracha of thanksgiving on the day itself. But since the expression of it is the lighting of lights, so we wait specifically for that moment. In other words, to say it differently, unlike the other holidays where the whole atmosphere of the time is impacted by the Kedushat Zman, the Torah tells us this is a time when you can't do malacha, this is a time when you have to have the mitzvah of simcha, this is a time when you have to have a mitzvah of a, a liel regel maybe, or a specific mitzvah min ha-Torah. We don't have any of those things on Hanukkah. What do we have on Hanukkah? Mitzvah the Rabbanan. The Chachamim were not able to create Kedushat Zman, a sanctity of time that would in and of itself warrant a brach of Shechianu. But what were they able to do? They were able to institute mitzvahs on rabbinic level that when you do the mitzvah, it will, so to speak, uh, to wit, ignite within you uh, the idea that you really do have a great thanksgiving for the time period itself. And therefore, uh, when you make the bracha of, on, the, on the lights, whether you're lighting them yourself or you're seeing them on the first night, you would also add the brach of Shechianu v'kimanu v'ginu zman azeh to thank Hashem for hoda'a, thanksgiving, on the day itself. It's a unique expression on the day, but it's not the kedusha hayom, the sanctity inherent in the day, but rather the sanctity that is created as a result of the mitzvahs that you do. Rav Baruch Gigi, one of the Rosh Yeshiva Shivat Haratzion, and also Rav Moshe Feinstein, the Igret Moshe Chela Gimel, and Orchaim Chela Gimel, have the, the bring about this idea. I think they got it originally from the Hemik She'ela, um, and that is that when it comes to holidays that are enacted midrabanan by the Chachamim, the act of mitzvah is what enlivens the the moment, which brings about the possibility of the recitation of the Shachianu. So that's why you're saying the Shachianu on Mikra Megillah. That's why you're saying the Shachianu on Hadlakat Nerot. And that's why for Hadlakat Nerot, even if you didn't light, but you saw someone else on the first night, you could say the Shachianu uh, uh, a blessing. I just gave you some other sources here, which I'll just give you in, in, in three three sentences or less, which means another minute or so, right? Uh, any mitzvah that has simcha, says, say Tosfot, that same Gemara in Masachet Sukkah, we say Shechianu. That's what he thinks. Any mitzvah that has simcha, we're going to say Shechianu. Right? And then and there's a list. And the Rambam says, any mitzvah that is from time to time, Shofar, Sukkah, Lulav, Mikra, Megil, and Hanukkah. See how we put the biblical and rabbinic all in one basket? Why is that? Because the mitzvah you're doing seasonally, and he thinks that one should recite the uh, the bracha. If not, when you make a mitzvah object, then at least when you do the mitzvah itself, uh, uh, like that. And in Hilchot Hanukkah, Hanukkah, this is the last source. We'll look at this one in size. Give us a nice idea to take with us into our Hanukkah. He explains, after he starts explaining the history of Hanukkah, the Rambam in his Hilchot Megillah of Hanukkah, in Paragimel is on focus on Hanukkah, he writes, Chachamim, Sheba'oto Hador, in that generation, the Chachamim enacted, Sheyush Shmonot Hayamim Ha'elu, 
that these eight days, from those days, they made an enactment that from that time forward, from 25th of Kislev onward, there you may simcha v'halel, days of simcha and halel, and their madlik, we're going to be madlik at that time, neirot, be'erev, Right, and we're going to light the candles uh, each night on the uh, on the uh, doorways of the homes uh, uh, each and every night from the eight nights to demonstrate and to reveal the miracle. Uh, and these nights are called Hanukkah, and you're not allowed to have a eulogy, God forbid, you're not allowed to have fasting on Yom Purim. And he writes, And the lighting of the lights is a mitzvah midivrei sofrim from the world of the scribes, meaning a certain generation of chachamim, just like the, the, the Megillah. Mm-hmm. Say Rav Baruch Gigi and, 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 and Rav Moshe Feinstein says it along these lines as well, and others. What is the nature of the Meisimcha v'halel? There's not enough simcha to just say shachianu on itzuma shel yom. But why do we say shachianu on the holiday of Hanukkah? It is a result of lighting the lights. The lights that are lit fill the days themselves with content that enliven the time, I use the expression, sort of ignite within those days, the notion of simcha to the point where we do say a a little bit on the yom itself, even if we're not personally, we're just watching, we're not personally lighting the uh, the candles uh, as such. So this is just a little foray into the world of, uh, of shachianu, a bracha of thanksgiving. It was not exhaustive by any means, and we're not able to have an exhaustive seer this morning. Um, let me just um, wish everyone uh, happy thanksgiving. Uh, and I mentioned already this morning that today is Rosh Chodesh. So even though there is actually no mitzvah mina Torah, nor mida Rabbanan, to eat uh, particular foods uh, on Thanksgiving, there is, according to many, a mitzvah of Suda on Rosh Chodesh. And therefore, we should make sure uh, to try at the Suda to have washing and benching if we're able to. And the Berkat Amazon, not to forget the various additions like Yal Yavl and Arachaman for uh, Rosh Chodesh. And uh, we should be zochum to many great opportunities to uh, celebrate together uh, uh, days of gladness and joy to be able to recite the bracha baruch shechianu v'kiman v'gyanu lazman hazeh. Adkan for this morning. Thank you very much.